There's certainly no shortage of budget tablets on the market, but finding a good one that stands out is easier said than done. In my opinion, two of the best entry-level budget tablets you can buy right now include the Amazon Fire tablet and still the Nexus 7 2013, even though it's a couple of years old. But unfortunately, the Asus ZenPad 8.0 isn't one of them. Unlike the higher-end ZenPad S 8.0, which I recently reviewed and was genuinely impressed with, the standard ZenPad is pretty disappointing, despite its relatively cheap £90 or $120 price tag. There seems to be a few versions of the ZenPad 8 as well, with different RAM, processor, and storage combinations. This model I'm reviewing here is the Z380C model, which features a quad-core Intel Atom C3 200, 2GB of RAM, and 16GB of built-in storage. Despite running Android 5.0.2, which while it may not be the latest marshmallow, is still pretty recent, I haven't used a tablet in quite a few years that felt this slow. Whether it's the weak hardware or Asus's own Zen UI skin that slows it down, I can't be sure. But what certainly doesn't help is the ridiculous amount of bloatware on the tablet. It was the same for the ZenPad S, but apps like MyAsus, Zen Circle, MiniMovie, Splendid, Mirror, Asus Support, 50 Plus Games, Omelet Chat, and many more pre-installed on the tablet. It's frustrating, it takes up storage space, and you don't need that kind of crap on a tablet, especially one that has such performance issues in the first place. But speaking of performance, it's adequate, I suppose, if you're not uh, running any particularly intensive apps and you haven't got a lot going on in the background. But to its credit, the ZenPad can run challenging games like Modern Combat 5. However, the resolution, the graphic settings, and the frame rate is far too low to be an enjoyable experience. I wouldn't really recommend it. I think you can tell I'm not particularly impressed by the ZenPad so far, but let's talk about something a bit more positive. The display uses an IPS panel, which is great considering it's a budget tablet. Viewing angles are fantastic, colors are bright and vibrant, and generally it's really nice to look at. My only complaint is it's fairly low res at 1280 by 800 which isn't the end of the world especially for a budget tablet it is just 90 quid but if you consider the similarly priced Nexus 7 2013 you can get for about 110 pounds now that has a full HD display uh, this is a little bit uh, pixelated it's not quite as sharp uh, in comparison so uh, the resolution does um, lower the display quality somewhat even though the IPS panel is quite nice. In terms of the design, the ZenPad actually looks nicer than it feels. The thin bezels and plastic faux metal finish around the edge of the tablet give it a fairly modern, fairly sleek look, if not particularly premium. It's a pretty unassuming tablet until you turn it over and see that quite unique design on the back. It's got a textured plastic backplate which is removable and gives the back of the tablet an interesting two-tone style which looks quite nice, but the backplate itself feels pretty cheap and really rough to hold. It's uh, quite similarly styled to the more expensive ZenPad S 8.0, but picking this tablet up is, in a word, disappointing. Uh, it just feels cheap, it's rough, it's just not very pleasant to hold. However, as nasty as the backplate is to hold, it's actually removable and lets you attach a range of optional ZenPad accessories, including an audio cover and a power case. The ZenPad S may look nicer, but it doesn't support these accessories, so there's an argument that this cheaper one actually has function over form. Weighing 350 grams and at 8.5 millimeters thick, it's a fairly average size 8 inch tablet. It's quite comfortable to hold. Uh, while I don't particularly like the back cover, uh, it is textured so it makes holding it quite easy uh, and so you can grip it with one hand uh, pretty easily. And it's not the best looking tablet, but you know what, it's not bad, especially if you consider the price. In terms of ports, there's the usual 3.5mm jack, a uh, micro USB port, along with micro SD, which is great to see as you only get about 11GB free of the 16GB uh, built in on this model. Now moving on to battery life, we've got 4000 mAh battery inside, which uh, sounds pretty impressive but doesn't translate to anything uh, particularly good. The ZenPad took just 6 hours and 17 minutes to fully discharge uh, while running the Geekbench battery rundown test, uh, which compared to the Nexus 7 2013 took 9 hours and 15. I think you'll agree that's pretty disappointing in comparison. But with casual use, you'll get around 6 to 7 hours out of it. You might want to charge it every other day, depending on how often you do use it. Now as for the cameras, we've got a 5 megapixel back and 2 megapixel front. The camera app interface is actually quite good with large icons making it easy to use and there's a fairly impressive range of options you can tinker with including the white balance, the ISO and exposure. Now while video resolution is limited to basic 720p HD and there's no flash, camera quality is pretty good on the whole. It's no substitute for a decent smartphone of course, a dedicated camera, but to the ZenPad's credit the colours are nice and there's a decent amount of detail. But what isn't so good is the front selfie camera. Even in good light there's far too much noise and I wouldn't recommend using it at all. In terms of sound quality there's a single speaker on the top bezel uh, of the tablet. It's okay, it lacks space a little bit but uh, uh, compared to other Android tablets, other budget tablets, it's actually not too bad at all. The volume is impressive and it's, it's just good enough you know to watch a few movies, a bit of YouTube, maybe play the odd game but of course I'd always recommend using the three and a half mil uh, jack at the, top, uh, at the top and plug in a decent pair of headphones. Hi guys welcome back to the Tech Chat where today
Overall, I don't think I would recommend the Asus ZenPad 8.0. I was a big fan of its higher-end brother, the ZenPad S, but while this may be quite a bit cheaper, it does compromise in just too many ways with its low resolution, weak performance, and cheap build quality. If you are in the market for an entry-level Android tablet, I'd still personally recommend the Nexus 7 2013. It's a couple of years older than this, uh, than the ZenPad, but the screen's much nicer, uh, it's nicer to hold, the build quality is better, uh, so that's definitely a good alternative uh, instead of the ZenPad. Or, of course, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, I would would still highly recommend the Zenpad S 8.0. So I hope you found my review of the Asus Zenpad 8 useful. If you do enjoy my videos, please do like, share and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching guys and I'll see you again right here on the Tech Chat.